Now, recording this time around, recording with you guys from what I've seen in a year and a half in the life and St. Anger is never a happy time or a pleasant, easy process. There always seems to be some kind of torture in the studio with you guys. Um, with Rick Rubin at the helm this time around, I heard he was really very hands-off, kind of Rick comes in, listens and goes, it's not there yet, and then leaves you to it. How did that work this time around? Was it more comfortable or? I liked it. I think it gave us, uh, gave us a chance to, you know, fumble, screw up, fix it. Uh, we, we basically were left on our own. Bob Rock on the other records was always there to help, you know, motivate, to help do whatever. I mean, he had wore many hats. Now there was no one there. It went from, you know, St. Anger where we had like, you know, enhancement coaches, <laughs> you know, management and everyone, you know, making sure, okay, get together guys, you know, don't kill each other and uh, make a nice record, bye. Uh, <clears throat> you know, this time was, okay, um, should we start writing? Oh, I guess so. <laughs> uh, do you, you got a key to the jam room? <laughs> you know, how do we get in there? Okay, let's go. And, you know, we had, you know, Ruben showed up every once in a while to offer some direction, some motivation, and say yay or nay to songs. But otherwise, it was like, hey, you guys, <laughs> you are Metallica. Act like it. <laughs> you know, go do it. And we did. And uh, we're pretty, pretty proud of it probably a good time now that you guys reached like a mature point where you could kind of take responsibility and it, I mean it sounds yeah, like it's part much. it's Metallica produced and Rick Rubin produced right. right well yeah I mean it's that whole Saint Anger oh it was such uh, an amount of work from within uh, getting each other healthy so we could even communicate with each other let alone make one joint communication called St. Anger. This one was so much easier. So much, uh, uh, I guess, motivation in the same direction. We had no uh, enemies within. You know, we had, a, we had a vision, we had a mission. People so, weren't setting each other off like they used to in the past and nobody's pushing buttons. Right. We felt comfortable with each other. We were able to feel looser in the studio and then get a better attitude a better vibe to feel like increased communication with with each other right. since you had to and you sure were there right were there. times where it came down to okay there's the Mexican standoff where no one's gonna budge you know uh, I like I like the song this way he Lars likes it you know he is Lars he likes it that way okay what are we gonna do here well all right we'll try it this way we'll try it that way and we'll just leave it for a while and we'll come back to it and uh, let Rick Rubin hear his his opinion. He might have a third better opinion. So, and that did happen quite quite often. Mm -hmm. We never got hung up on stuff like that. Is there a DVD coming out of this album production too? Uh, do you think another kind of monster? Uh. <laughs> a nicer monster? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, there <clears throat> there's not not a plan for that. <sighs> I think. Uh, because honestly, I think it was really hard for the fans to see some kind of monster yeah. in a respect. I believe, I believe you're right. It wasn't for the fans, really. It was kind of a movie for the non-fan, being able to see, wow, they're, they're actually human, and they have some pretty screwed up issues, and they're working on them. But it's a human story, not so much my hero's story. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so, uh, I could see that it's tough for a fan to watch that. I mean, it's tough for me to watch it. Uh, but great mirror for us. I think it was a great gift. Happened for a reason, and we couldn't not put that out. Uh, you know, it was a ballsy move, but I think there's a lot of accountability. A lot of accountability now with us and our fans and the world. You know, I think if I'm walking into a bar, someone will go, hey! Isn't that that dude in the monster movie that's not supposed to drink? <laughs> oh, yeah. Thanks. Yeah, thank you. So, you know, stuff like that. But I don't know. This movie would be boring. <laughs> Us getting be along. Everybody getting along. Hey, <laughs> well, Mission Metallica was, was part, partly that. You know, the buildup for the record, the, mm -hmm. you know, whatever, two minutes of, of your daily dose of us, you know, eating a sandwich in the studio. I mean, Wow, I mean, how much footage can we have of someone eating in the studio? Well, but there was actual content, you know. 
you wanted to give them a bit of the record without giving it all away and ah you know so without conflict no movie you know you've seen movies before you've seen uh, uh reality tv oh, yeah. you've seen uh you know you got to have you got to have struggle and then everyone roots for everyone to get better so so you feel like you guys have the tools to avoid as much struggle as possible i think and conflict Whatever comes, we'll be able to deal with better. But life, life is a, a hugely unknown, uh, and whatever something horrible could happen, it could, you know, throw everyone into a loop. But we're, hopefully we're not. Doing good now. You feel like you built a better Metallica in the last Absolutely. few years? Absolutely, no doubt about that. There's no doubt, and it's still surreal to think that this album's doing really good. We're on tour forever, and people are showing up at the shows and we're playing like six songs live new ones and oh feels really good really really good we're excited i think that they need to take you back yeah because the family's here so i don't want to take up any more of your time but Radio. thanks a bunch we appreciate it okay 107 7 the bone streaming online at 1077thebone.com